It's great to be here. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Sofia Svantesson, and I have another Sofia with me on stage. She's going to talk in a few minutes after I've introduced some of the initial work that uh, my design agency, Ocean Observations, has done together with Karolinska Institutet and Sofia Ernestam. Today we're going to talk about how you create meaningful e-health services for the chronically ill with the patient in mind and using their stories to transform healthcare. Um, and I would like to introduce the whole speech with a quote, actually, from this conference last year. Then an American investor in biotech named Stephen Burrill was standing on this stage and he said that if we do not fundamentally change our healthcare systems, all countries in the world will go bankrupt by 2020. And I guess that's why we're all here today, that we want to transform healthcare. Um, and it's utterly important, as many people have mentioned already today. It's a huge cost for the different states in the world to take care of healthcare in the way that we do today. So, for example, chronic diseases are the most prevalent and costly of all health problems in the world today. And they are something that we need to pay a lot of attention to and that we really need to transform. Um, and this is what our speech here is about today, that scientists and doctors, and Sofia being one of those, in rheumatology at Karolinska Institutet here in Stockholm, they had realized that it took way too long for patients with symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, to, re to reach specialist care. And this is a serious problem, because the longer it takes to get a diagnosis and to get treatment, the higher the risk is for these people to become disabled. I'm pretty sure that lots of you have seen pictures of people who are in um, wheelchairs and cannot even move around any longer, and their limbs and joints are totally deformed. Um, so they can become disabled if we do not take care of these people in time. And uh, they might go into sick leave, they can't work, and we know that is a cost and a problem for both the state and the individual. And they will also be relying upon really expensive uh, medication for the rest of their lives. So this is costly for the Swedish state, but it's also a lot of suffering for the individual. So how can this situation change? And what can we do? And one of the initial questions, I'm oh, sorry, I'll go back to this one. No. One of the initial questions is why is this journey so long and what can we do to shorten it? And in order to find out what the problems are, we need a holistic perspective on healthcare. So even though the specialist at KI had realized that this journey is way too long, we get these patients too late into our departments. We have to understand what does this journey look like from the patient's perspective. And in order to do so, we need to collect their stories because in their stories, we will find the holistic perspective and not only the issue issues from profession, either from primary care or specialist care. So what we did as a design agency was to go in and start looking at this patient journey. What does it look like? How can we build this um, holistic perspective with help from visual tools? And one of these tools is something that we call the patient journey. And I'll just quickly show you what that is about. What you see here is um, a patient that starts getting his or her first symptoms to the left, and then what the journey might look like all the way to the right, where he or she is getting a diagnosis diagnosis and treatment, and what can happen along the road. And so you see all the different touch points that this person has with healthcare and other institutions. We're adding all the feelings and the thoughts that these people have along this journey to this map. And in the end, we also have an analysis section and comments for what are the major problems during this journey and how do we think that we can solve those problems with help from digital tools. And Sophia had a hypothesis already when we started this project, but what if an online screening of some kind can help this journey become a lot shorter? And we found out that, yes, we think that the screening is the answer to this question. We'll talk about the screening more a little bit later, but first I want to tell you how much you can find when you're actually listening to the patients. So let's have a look at this uh, journey again. And it's a good thing if this journey from symptom to diagnosis takes about three months, 
that is a great thing. And we're going to now listen to Helen's story. Helen is just one of all the patients that we met during this uh, research phase. And Helen has been twisting around in this first phase where you see all these red lines that doesn't lead towards diagnosis. They just lead backwards in this change and then just lead to delay. She's been circling around here for two years. And eventually, Helen gets a diagnosis after two years when she's visiting primary care, maybe for the 10th or 12th time. And she says to us, eventually I was diagnosed with Morton's neuron. It took until late 2012 before I had an operation time for the bump in my foot. Before the surgery, I said I have a lot of pain in my toes. And then the doctor said that we will look at that when you're coming back for a checkup after surgery. So the thing is that for two years, Helen has pain in her feet and she's trying so many different things to try to relieve the pain. And she gets into primary care and she's being, you can see the red circles here. The first thing that happens to her is that she's sent home without a diagnosis so many times. Then she gets a cortisone treatment, which is a really bad thing uh, for being able to set a diagnosis in RA. Um, but that, leaves, that relieves the pain, so for quite some time she stops thinking about her possible situation. She feels good again, um, but of course pain is coming back and then eventually she's sent to the orthopedist, as you can see here in another red circle. So this is where she's at right now. She's had pain in her feet, no one is suspicioning any arthritis sickness. And she starts to complain about also pain in her toes, but still the doctor is not reacting to anything. She is sent to, to or the orthopedist and she's having an operation. And then she tells us that I had to sit still for a while after the surgery and wear some kind of boot. And I limped around a bit and then I started getting pain in my knee. I went for a checkup in January and I told the doctor about my knee. And then the doctor told me that it was probably strained or overworked. Still, no one reacts to anything but this lump in her foot that everyone thought was Morton's neuron. Moving further, she says that eventually I started to get pain, I feel pain in my hands, and then they also became swollen. That's when the doctor mentioned RA for the first time, and he took some blood samples, and there was proof that yes, uh, you have an inflammation. And eventually, uh, Helen ends up in specialist care and then she also says that after I got my diagnosis I googled my symptoms and I saw how clearly it was that they all po pointed towards RA. This is about two and a half year and as I mentioned before a three month journey is a good thing and what do you think happened to a disease within someone's body when it takes so long to set the diagnosis? Sophia knows all about that and how difficult that actually is for people. So, as I mentioned here, Helen googled not until actually after she got her diagnosis, but a lot of people today are starting to go to the internet to search for advice before they go to the doctor. And that's also something that we saw in this journey and that we have mentioned here, that before they go to primary care, they start googling for their symptoms. And Together with Helen's story and a lot of other stories, and also interviewing primary care, we realized that this is a problem. Because for one thing, when people go out on the internet, they find a lot of information which is not validated and which sometimes is outright wrong. The other issue is that pr the profession, the primary doctors, are not very interested in listening to the patient and their own thoughts about their diagnosis. So when they come with their research talking about what they think they have, doctors are very reluctant to listen. And for one thing, you have to agree that it's not so strange because, because of all this crap that's also found on the internet and all the tabloids that I'm sure that you've all seen, it's like every week we see tabloids with, oh, skinny people can be fat on the inside and living people might actually be dead and take this test and see if you have Alzheimer's and oh, you have a little pain in your stomach, that might be cancer. So, when people come with these results, you can realize that it's difficult for profession to have these, they have 15 minutes with a patient maybe, and they're supposed to try to find out where did you get this information from and why do you think you have these, this disease. So we see that there is a problem here that we can solve. And we realized with a screening tool 
online where people at home, they can prepare, they answer a number of questions, they prepare, they come to the doctors with answers to lots of important questions that are uh, a sign that this might be an arthritis type of disease. Um, you can see that when this screening is co-created with the profession, with people like Sophia, who knows what questions are important, together with the patient, when you realize that these are the type of questions they want to answer in order to feel secure, when you take that material to the primary care, they will have a common understanding, they will have a trustworthy tool, which will help both the health seekers and the caregivers. They can, they can rely upon this type of result because they created it together. And to be clear, also the primary care has been part of this journey. You can't see them in this because it's focusing on the patient, but their needs has also been brought into this study in order to make sure that we support them because in the end, they are the first one who will receive this um, type of screening result from the patients when they have taken it online. So I'll also quickly show you just a few of the, the questions. And what we could see in this patient journey was that whenever this, the, the disease started in the feet, it was very hard to set a diagnosis because for some reasons, uh, it's not that common that you look at the feet. So we thought that it's very important that we also start talking about feet when screening for RA. So we added to this responsive website, which is also the, the uh, result of this, the tool is web-based since people Google, uh, we have to be online. And we did the responsive website so people could take this test, whatever they are. So we have added new questions into this about the feet because we realized that this is really important. And both health, health seekers and the caregivers need support in this question. Other questions are based on long-term and fantastic and awarded research from people like Sophia. And now she will take over and talk a little bit more about why you ask these types of questions and what happens next when you have your result. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation. Um, I will tell you about how fantastic it's been to work together with Sophia uh, and how, for example, she and her team have pinpointed how important it is for this feat. Because in our scores, when we measure uh, RA, and this is activity, we have forgotten the feet. And uh, through this way of listening to patients, uh, we have reintroduced it, and I think we will reintroduce this also for our patients with established disease. So that's one example on, on how, when you uh, have new, um, when we work together with people who are working in different areas, and. Uh, in a co-creative way, we, we can go much further and uh, also look at areas where we have forgotten something. So I think it has been, I hope, for many years <laughs> of working together with Sophia um, and other people in the same area. So, and this uh, website, a uh, web service, is found on the web. And what we are doing now is trying to test it in primary care, because even if we think that we might have got the right questions, still we have to work together with primary care. And we have already worked with them, but now we have to try to test it in reality. And that has uh, been a challenge, because primary care in Stockholm County Council is very they are working very, very hard, and trying to have a test uh, unit that ha hasn't been um, an easy question. Uh, but we have worked with, and we're still working with the primary care, trying to get to, to develop this uh, web service further. What has been important for primary care when they uh, look at this paper that they can get from the patient uh, is they didn't want to score. They did want, want to see all the questions and what the patient has answered to, so they themselves can uh, have a judgment uh, of the result. So that's one thing that's important. And, um, because, and for the patients, it is like having a friend trying to help them to remember what they really would like to tell uh, the doctors when they come to primary care with their problems. 
and that's one kind of empowerment. And in their minds, of course, it's a worry about having distracting joints that won't function. Uh, so, and Sophia and her team have tried to develop this web service so that people, so the patient can uh, read a lot more and get a lot more new knowledge uh, about arthritis, and also that it's important with early diagnosis, of course. And then you won't have these uh, destructive joints because we have so many good treatments. In rheumatology, we have worked actually with a, um, a startup in e-health uh, within, within our rheumato within our quality register, where the patient uh, put in their data in the waiting room or at minimum ward contactor, and. Uh, we use it at the meeting, at the consultation, uh, at the units. And then we have a shared decision. The patient provides their data and we look at them together, both physician or nurse and the patient. And we can have a, a new decision on treatment, on rehabilitation, and also on lifestyle factors that's really very important for my, many chronic diseases. So you should stop smoking and uh, start exercising. And with this support system, we have it much easier to motivate patients and try to, um, to start, yeah, <laughs> to, uh, yeah, to take their own decisions about their life. So what's important, and now we are trying to move into uh, a new way, because you saw that this graph was very easy and simple, and we, there are so much data out there, and we will show the patient much more uh, and also get information both from research and maybe blood samples. And what's important uh, when we move further is that we have this co-creative um, design thinking and invite both patients, nurses and doctors, and also service design uh, designers, IT people, and many more to move further together and also to try to help healthcare getting a, a better way um, for follow-up and also help us with the list that we sit with during the consultation of all that we have to remember. So I think uh, that when we work together, we will have great opportunities uh, for a much better health for, for many patients. Thank you. Thank you, Sofia and Sofia. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank One you. very brief question before I uh, let you leave stage is when I all, and also when I was listening to Dave here before, the empowerment of the patient. Uh, what would you say is the big thing? I mean, getting the information and understanding my affliction or understanding that there are other people out there with the same affliction and I, I'm not alone and that I get the support from other people. I mean, do, do you any, see any, what do you feel is the, uh, the big thing there? I see a combination from the interviews that I've been doing in order to be able to structure this patient journey map. You see that the first thing is that they need, um, they need to feel comfortable when they meet the profession, when they go to the doctor, because they feel subordinated. They think that the doctor is an authority, they get a little bit scared, they can't remember everything that's important and that they need to say. So then they need to be educated in a tool like this or differently. But when they have their diagnosis and know that, all right, so this is my life, this is what I'm going to live for, for the rest of my life, then they definitely want to go out and start meeting other people and start discussing. Yeah. That was what I found out mm -hmm. in this research, but it could be different for different diseases, I guess. Yeah. An interesting topic. Thank you very much, Sophia and Sophia. Thank you. Thank you. Give a big hand again.